It was a hot, sticky day, with a monsoon approaching, as I flew by helicopter towards Prey Veng, 30 miles east of Phnom Penh. It was known to be an area of intense Khmer activity, as the guerrillas tried to cut communications between Saigon and Phnom Penh. When we got over the front line, the pilot decided it was too risky to put the machine down. Instead, he hovered a few feet above ground while we jumped out. Next morning, a platoon of Cambodian soldiers showed up, looking like gypsies. They had AK-47 automatic rifles. The plan was that they should go in first across the rice paddies to see where the fire was coming from. The Vietnamese commander advised me against going with them, but I was too keyed up not to go. We crossed three dry rice fields and then some that were full of water. Suddenly, a hail of fire rose from a line of trees and the water started splashing up around us like fountains. There seemed to be a great many fountains round me, possibly because I was a head taller than anyone else on the march. There was a ridge to my right and I managed to lie in the water with my head almost under while my right hand held the cameras propped on the ridge. I made up my mind to move away from the bank and get behind the radio operator. My one thought was to avoid a head wound and I thought the big radio should give me some shelter. I was in a panic and began to feel that someone was drawing a line on my position and would keep firing at me whatever move I made. All over the paddy there were figures up to their necks in slime. The absence of any returning fire indicated that most of them had discarded their weapons. I edged away from the radio operator and bumped into three men in black outfits, lying face down in the water. They were Khmer Rouge, killed in the previous day's fighting. Worry about staying alive mingled with concern to keep my cameras dry. I made it back to the ridge and crawled on my back the 200 yards to the edge of the paddy. When I got up to run the last stretch, it was like a bad dream. My legs were like two heavy weights. I was doing a sort of zigzag run and the mortar fire was hitting the ground all round me, earth exploding in huge cascades. I was labouring under the camera equipment and the sodden clothes and the heavy fear. When we got back, I crashed out in an exhausted state at the feet of the Vietnamese commander who smiled at me when I looked up. He had told me so. I started to check over the condition of my cameras and found that one of my Nikons had the perfect imprint of an AK-47 round. This discovery was oddly exhilarating. I thought to myself, Boy, you've done it again. You've managed to get away with it.